Properties of logarithms. All right, so as we start this last week of the semester and last week of material, we want to talk a little bit about certain properties of logs, uh, those being the product quotient and power rules. By and large, you guys are going to find this stuff pretty easy, I suspect. Okay, so the product rule. All right, so here um, I'm going to read the math to you. If we have log base b of m times n, then using what's called the product rule, we can rewrite this as log base b of m plus log base b of n. All right, so in other words, the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. Okay, so if again, if I have multiplication taking place inside the logarithm, I can rewrite that as a sum of logarithms. All right, so let's look at an example. Here we have log base 6 of 7 times the letter z. And so I can just rewrite this as log base 6 of 7 plus log base 6 of z. Okay, log of 100 times x. Now remember, when we don't see the number, what do we assume that base is? It's the common log, and so the base is 10. So we rewrite this as log of 100 plus log of x. So again, the multiplication becomes a sum of logs. And how can we simplify log of 100? Well, 100 is 10 squared. And so the 10, the base of 10 in the log cancels with the 10 in the, ex, uh, in the base of the exponent. And so we just get the square or the power to fall out, as I often say. And so our final answer is 2 plus log x. All right, let's look at the quotient rule. So here, if we have log base b of m divided by n, then this is going to equal log base b of m minus log base b of n. So where a product was rewritten using addition, a fraction or division is going to be rewritten using subtraction. Okay, so the logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. All right, again, note this is very, very important. We see one log base b of m divided by n. We do not see log base b of m all divided by log base b of n. The key here, guys, on that left-hand side is that there is one logarithm base b, okay? So let's, let's work through a couple examples. We have log base 8 of 23 divided by x, all right? According to our quotient rule, how can we rewrite this? Well, we're going to get the difference of two logs. So log base 8 of 23 minus log base 8 of x. All right, what about ln? of e to the fifth over 11. Well, again, we're just going to rewrite that division as the difference of two logs. So we have ln of e to the fifth minus ln of 11. Now, keep in mind, ln and e undo each other. They are inverses. And so what's going to happen to that first term? The 5 is simply going to drop down. The ln and the e cancel. So we have 5 minus ln of 11. All right, what about the power rule? All right, so here in our math, we have log base b of m raised to the p. All right, and we can rewrite that as bringing that power out in front of the logarithm as a coefficient. And so we can rewrite it as p times log base b of m. Okay, so the logarithm of a number with an exponent is the product of the exponent and the logarithm. In other words, that power goes out in front as a coefficient. All right, let's look at a couple examples. All right, here we have log base 6 of 3 to the ninth. According to our power rule, how can we rewrite this? Well, that 9 will pop out in front, and so we have 9 times log base 6 of 3. All right, another example. Log log ln of the cube root of x. Hmm, I don't really see a power, do you? Well, unfortunately, step one is we're going to have to rewrite x to a power, all right? So we need to use properties of exponents and rewrite that cube root as the one-third power. And so here we have ln of the cube root of x is really equal to ln to x to the one-third. And now we know what to do with that one-third using the power rule. 
we bring that one-third out in front, and so we have one-third times ln of x. All right, what about log of x plus 4 squared? Well, what do you think is going to happen to that square? It's going to pop out in front, and so we have 2 times log of x plus 4. All right, let's put it all together, you guys. All right, we're going to oftentimes have to expand logarithms or condense logarithms. So I'm going to go through a few examples where we're going to have to use all three rules. All right, so let's look at this problem right here. Log base b of x to the fourth times the cube root of y. What the heck is going to be our first step? Well, we see something that's not written in exponential form, meaning we've got the cube root of y. That's terrible. That doesn't help us at all. So we want to rewrite that as y to the one-third. All right, so I have log base b of x to the fourth times y to the one-third. I have multiplication going on inside the log. So let's rewrite the log as a sum of logs. Okay, so now I have log base b of x to the fourth plus log base b of y to the one-third. All right, what's the last thing that we can do here? Well, we have powers, right? So we can use the power rule and pop that four out in front as well as the one-third. And so using power rule, we end up with four times log base b of x plus one-third log base b of y. All right, let's go through another one. Log base 5 of the square root of x divided by 25y cubed. What's our first step going to be? And that is, we again, we've got a radical. That doesn't help us. We, instead of writing the square root of x, we want to write x raised to the 1 half. All right, and so here, notice that we have a fraction. All right, so once I get rid of my radical, I say, hmm, inside my logarithm, I have a fraction. Well, what rule can I use to expand that? And it, the answer is the quotient rule. All right, so we're going to apply subtraction. So we get log base 5 of the numerator, x to the 1 half, minus log base 5 of the denominator, 25y cubed. Now what? Well, we have a product in that second log, right? 25 times y cubed. Let's separate it. But this is really, really important, guys, because that... Let me grab my pen on this. We have subtraction here, all right? This subtraction hits both pieces of this sum that we're going to rewrite. Okay, so we have 25 times y cubed. We will get log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 of y cubed, but we've got to remember that that subtraction has to carry over to both of those terms. All right, so either do the subtraction automatically or use parentheses as I have done. All right, so where are we? All right, we have log base 5 of x to the 1 half minus log base 5 of 5 squared. Notice I rewrote 25 plus log base 5 of y cubed. All right, well, now what do we want to do? We want to use the power rule, okay? So I'm going to pop those powers out in front. So 1 half comes out in front of the first term. The 3 comes out in front of the last term. Why would I not bring the 2 out in front of log base 5 of 5? Well, I can, all right, but because of the inverse property, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it here, but really, we know going forward that with the inverse property, we're going to end up with just a 2. All right, so here I have distributed my subtraction, and I'm going to simplify the log base 5 of 5. And so that's our final answer of expanding that original one logarithm with a fraction. Okay, so it's just a bunch of steps, but just apply each reasonable rule or rule it applies at each single step. All right, let's go the other way. Let's take an expanded logarithmic function and condense it. All right, so here we have log, base, log of 25 plus log of 4. All right, well, I see addition of two logs. That means a product on the inside, right? So we get log of 25 times 4, which is just 100, 
Can we simplify log base 10 of 100? You betcha. All right, why? Because that's 10 squared. All right, and so we end up with simply 2 because log base 10 of 10 undo each other or cancel, so to speak. All right, let's do another one. Log of 7x plus 6 minus log of x. Well, I see the subtraction of two logs. All right, so what going backwards does subtraction mean? It means we're going to get a fraction. So we apply quotient rule the other way, and we get 7x plus 6. Is there anything we can simplify? No. All right, so again, guys, can't just cancel the x's as many of you want to do. We cannot do that because the 7x is married to the plus 6. Okay, so nothing more to do. That's our final answer. All right, let's do another one. All right, where are we going to start with 2 ln of x plus 1 third ln of x plus 5? I say we use power rule. We have those coefficients out in front, so let's, you, let's actually rewrite them as powers on the inside of the natural log. So my 2 goes on the x as a square, and my 1 third goes on the parentheses as a cube root. All right, well I have the addition or the sum of two natural logs, so I'm actually going to write them together inside of one log using multiplication. All right, so again, I've used power rule first, then I just used product rule. Anything else? Well, not necessarily. We can rewrite x plus 5 in parentheses to the 1 third. We can rewrite that as the cube root of x plus 5.